Today, you are going to hear an amazing story from the wonderful and mysterious land of India, which has been told since ancient times. Somewhere in a far, far away land, a wonderful boy named Gopal lives. He can travel through time and space. He likes to play and make jokes with his friends and tends cows on heavenly pastures. Gopal can work wonders. He can create new worlds. When Gopal plays on his wonderful flute, miraculous things start to happen. Everyone gathers together to hear this incredible music, which fills their hearts with happiness. The beloved world of Gopal looks like the most exquisite lotus flower which floats above the endless river called Viraja. This is Vrindavan, Gopal's hometown, and it is no ordinary place. They say that all worlds and planets in all the universes have their origin here, and that it is the best place in the whole creation. In the middle of Vrindavan, there is a great hill known as Govardhan. It is filled with many enchanting caves, fresh streams, kadamba trees and blossoming flowers. The birds sing sweetly and the bumblebees buzz joyfully as they collect nectar from the magnificent flowers which decorate the forest. The Yamuna River tenderly embraces Govardhan Hill like a blue lotus garland. In her cooling waters, golden fish play merrily. Frogs sing with rhyming croaks. Beautiful lotus flowers decorate the shining water surface, which is just like a mirror. The village of Vrindavan lies on the banks of the Yamuna River. Here, the cowherd boys live, tending many herds of cows and their calves. Gopal's friends and his parents, Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, also stay here. They love their son sincerely, and they spoil him with many different kinds of sweets. Gopal loves sweet balls. He also loves yogurt and soft butter. Every morning, Gopal goes with his friends to the hillside of Govardhan. 
There, they tend their lovely cows on luscious meadows and play many different kinds of games. Naughty monkeys, majestic peacocks, and noisy parrots are always eager to play with the cute little cowherd boys. In Vrindavan, the trees and flowers, the birds and animals, the forests, mountains and rivers, and even the clouds are alive and magical. All of them were created by Gopal to play and have fun with him. Once while playing with his friends, Gopal noticed that one of the clouds looked sad and all alone, without any friends to play with. So Gopal rushed towards the cloud. Suddenly, the cloud yawned, and Gopal flew right into its mouth. Gopal! Gopal! We need to help him! So all of his friends flew after him with great speed to some unknown universe, and all the people of Vrindavan followed after them. They flew across endless space for a long time. What a beautiful planet. Awesome. What a place. Oh, look there. Wow. This place looks just like our Vindavan. Look, there is Gopal. That is how, a long, long time ago, the village of Vrindavan came to our earth from the magical land of Goloka. Gopal and his friends were very happy to find a new place to play games and for new exciting opportunities for incredible adventures. sky, there is a grand palace of the majestic King Indra. His kingdom shines with luxury. Indra is a powerful god who commands the rains, thunder and lightning. He sends great big clouds to exactly the right places where people need rain so that their harvest will mature on time, so fruits become rich and tasty. Grass grows juicy for the cows, and rivers remain deep and abundant. Since the beginning of time, Indra has managed all the affairs of the sky and takes care of the people on Earth. Once, Gopal noticed that the people of Vrindavan were cooking a lot of tasty food. Is it going to be a holiday? He asked to his father, Nanda Maharaj. Every year, Gopal, we cook lots of delicious food and sweets, and then we treat the divine king Indra 
to a special feast. We always have a lot of fruits, our cows have lots of juicy grass, and the rivers are always full of fresh cool water. All of this is possible because Lord Indra sends rain to the earth. So we will make a big fire and it will transfer all of our offerings to the sky, directly to Indra's palace. That is the ancient tradition. Gopal argued with his father. Indra is the king of the sky. He sends us rain not because we spoil him with treats, but because it's his job to take care of the earth's prosperity. Father, look at our Govardhan hill. He is so marvelous. It is there that our fruits grow ripe and juicy. It is there our cows graze. Countless treasures are hidden there. Why don't we treat our beloved Govardhan with all these sweets? The people of Vrindavan were charmed by Gopal and his common sense. The cowherd boys forgot all their worries and organized a great festival parade headed by Gopal. They brought all the tasty foods and treats to the base of Govardhan Hill.
Suddenly, Gopher Dan Hill became alive and began to eat all of the sweets right in front of everyone. He ate everything with such a great appetite. After he had accepted all the food to the surprise of everyone, Gopher Dan mystically gave everything he had eaten back to the people of Vrindavan, completely untouched. He gave them all the trays, carts, and baskets full of tasty food. But it was no longer ordinary food. It had been magically transformed. The food was glowing. It was even more delicious, more fresh, and more tasty. When Indra didn't get his yearly treats, he burst out in rage. How dare they deprive me, the Lord of the Sky, of my tasty offerings. How could they listen to this foolish boy? I will send the King of Clouds to teach them a lesson. Soon they will understand that they made a big mistake by trusting this little boy. They will be on their knees begging for mercy. Vrindavan was in great danger. In the middle of the day, the sky became darker than night. Rivers overflowed their banks and flooded the valley. The wind was blowing like a hurricane. Lightning was flashing and thunder was roaring. Huge clouds circled the sun like a pack of hungry wolves. The sky looked as if it were covered with gray ash. Thunder and lightning banished all peace and calmness in Vrindavan. Gopal, you told us to worship Govardhan and not Indra. But now Indra is very mad and he wants to destroy us all. What are we going to do now? Don't worry, my friends. Govardhan is very pleased with us. He will protect us from Indra's rage. Gopal came to Govardhan, bowed down to him, and in the blink of an eye, he lifted the great mountain right out from the earth, just as if he were picking a mushroom, and raised it above his head with the greatest of ease. He was holding the entire hill effortlessly, as if it were a huge umbrella. All people and the animals were astonished and they quickly took shelter under the hill. Everyone was relieved. Their fear was removed and their shivering from the cold stopped. No matter how strong the rain and wind came down, the people of Vrindavan were no longer scared. For seven whole days, Gopal held the hill as if it were just a small stone and all the while he played, but the people of Vrindavan were safely under the protection of Gopal and Govardhan Hill. On the seventh day, Indra became terrified. Who is this little boy who could resist my rage? How can he make all these miracles? Now my kingdom is in danger. These little cowherd boys deprive me of my offerings and I decided to punish them. But now I'm afraid. I need to get some advice from the wise Sarabhi. I'm sure she will know how to help me. Sarabhi said, 
You have offended Gopal and his friends. You have been blinded by rage. You tried to destroy those who you should protect. You have forgotten that Vrindavan is Gopal's world, which he created for his fun and games. Indra's head sank lower and lower in sorrow and regret. He begged Surabhi to help him. She thought about everything and told Indra, Gopal and his friends like sweets so much. You should gather everyone who rules this universe over earth, on earth, and in the heavens. Prepare different kinds of sweets and make a great feast. If you are lucky, by doing this, maybe you can become friends with Gopal and win over his friends and relatives. A glimmer of hope flashed in the eyes of Indra, and riding swiftly on his devoted elephant carrier, he rushed to gather all the celestials and heavenly beings for the festival. Meanwhile, Indra ordered all the winds to calm down and the clouds to scatter, and very soon, the sun began to shine brightly once again over Vrindavan. The cowherd boys, cows, the birds and animals all came out from under the hill and Gopal placed Govardhan gently back in his place. Suddenly, from the heavens came the sweet sound of singing, which echoed from the bright sky and flowers began to fall. Everyone was puzzled. What is this? they cried. To their great surprise, the cowherd boys, looking to the sky, saw a huge procession of heavenly beings headed by the wise Rabhi approaching them. Indra had called her on purpose. He knew that Gopal loved cows very much. Indra had tried so hard, he gathered lots of guests. Vishnu himself came riding on Garuda, his great winged carrier. The creator of the universe, Brahma, along with Shiva and with his wife, Parvati, the wise Ganesha on his mouse, Kartikeya, Agni, Apsaras, and Gandharvas, all of them came to the festival and everyone was celebrating and glorifying Gopal. The great King Indra, who not so long ago had been so proud and angry, confessed and repented for his terrible behavior. Oh Gopal, now you have shown me a tiny bit of your greatness. Please forgive me. The one who is now down on his knees is not a great master and powerful king. He is simply your servant. I hope and pray only for your forgiveness. I don't need anything else. Well, Indra, I shall forgive you. But please remember that it is the duty of those who are strong and powerful to always take care of those who are weak and dependent. And so a big festival began. Everyone was singing and dancing around the great Govardhan Hill. Thus ends this incredible story of Gopal and the heavenly King Indra. Mother Yashoda asked Gopal, How did your mouth get all dirty? Did you eat soil again? <gasps> now 
all we know about the wonderful boy Gopal, and he will stay in our hearts forever playing on his miraculous flute.